So the next tool we're going to take a look at is actually the cloth tool, which is one of the most uh, secretly complex tools there is because it has so many uses. So we're going to start by just creating a square or uh, whatever you want on the screen. This does work with pictures, video files, anything you could imagine. And there's a lot of other cool uses, uh, but we're going to once again stay basic. So I'm going to add... Uh, well, add nothing yet. We're going to click cloth and just see what happens. So if you click cloth, we're going to get the prerequisite screen that says no puppet pins because we need puppet pins in order for cloth to work. So we'll add some puppet pins to this cloth layer and maybe close this window up for a second and also not quit this project. So we'll uh, bring up our puppet pin tool and we'll add some puppet pins to this layer. So you can go and change your expansion or your triangle count, which is like the separation of the fake polygons of this uh, puppet pin effect. Uh, but this is a native Adobe kind of thing and it's normally kind of funky to work with. Uh, cloth makes it a little bit better. So we've created a couple random pins and we're gonna click cloth and this time we go to the sub menu for cloth and we have our familiar options of key comp and shy. Uh, this time we're gonna do comp and click cloth and we'll enter a name here. We'll call this our uh, cloth rig or an ooth rig um, and press enter. So once we've created that, we're gonna go down into our advanced dynamics and enable this just so we can start to see what cloth can do. Once again, this is a random motion. So uh, if you added keyframes, you would be able to make exactly what you want. But in this kind of uh, delayed environment, uh, you can get kind of a soft body effect and it looks pretty nice. Um, but this all works in a very dynamic and cool way. And you still have access to all the Midas modules like magnetism scatter and everything. So you could take these pins if we click into the the rig and look at these controls and go down into your different magnetisms and actually go and set this to like zeros if you wanted. So it would have like no relationship. Um, but yeah, the, this tool actually is pretty awesome. You can do tons of cool hair character stuff, uh, limbs and uh, everything, but cloth is a lot of fun, uh, but it actually also has some uh, different features and uses, which we're gonna go and look at right now. So I've uh, done a little bit of an animation, but let's say the, the goal of it is not necessarily to use the, the layer with the puppet effect, but actually use the controls because it kind of is a nice dynamic motion. So we're gonna go on over to our cloth here and go down into the child and turn off our visibility and you're going to see that we have toggled off the layer uh, that originally had the uh, puppet pins added to it but we still have these kind of cool controls that are actually doing the soft body dynamic effect uh, or cloth effect to uh, the child so what we're going to do with that is click into the controls and turn this up a whole bunch and maybe change what the color is referencing to this blue. And we can go, uh, oh, actually I should mention, uh, this color module here, um, it adds an effect that you can turn on or off. Uh, this is just a default effect, it doesn't matter. Um, in your workflow under child color, I like it on, um, but it basically adds a little effect control uh, that you can turn on or off, uh, and it'll just like filter your Midas affected layers. So it's just a good way to keep your eyes on uh, what you're working on or just get some cool like color variants and um, whatnot. It's, it's good to play around with. So that's the color module, little side note, and that is for a lot of the other tools as well. So we now have this little um, kind of cloth dot rig, uh, but maybe what we want to do with this is actually go and use it with another tool. So we can select our controller layers and create something like a vector mesh and add some letters to it like df, df, df. Go back to our comp and you're going to see we have a cloth rig, but we're actually using these controls uh, to do some other animation. So if we go back to our cloth rig, I can go and I can turn back on my child visibility. But at this point, what we want to do is uh, make this relationship a little bit better. We're going to go and turn off our dynamics here. Uh, so we should snap to just a normal relationship. We'll go back to our child and disable this magnetism because we want just a normal relationship again. And hopefully nothing's moving, which it isn't. And we're going to go and actually set up another layer. So I'll create another square here, center up that anchor point, And we're going to go to our cloth rig and go down to this other option in cloth called parent. We can enable this uh, option and go and select our new layer. And you're going to see that our 
object is now attached to our other layer. So once again, this is how you would work with uh, character hair, limbs, or anything like that. But then if you were to keyframe either your uh, parent layer or your parent layer's parent, um, you're going to see that it also affects the children in the same kind of uh, cloth dynamic way. And I should have added some better keyframes there. But in a nutshell, that's some basic examples of cloth, and we'll be putting up some cool examples uh, down the road. So we'll jump on over to another tool.